My, my name's Audrey. I'm, I'm from Singapore and I'm currently back in Singapore post the MBA. Um, so prior to the MBA, I spent uh, my entire career actually in the oil and gas sector. So I was working with Shell, uh, joined right out of, out of college into the HR graduate program. Um, and yeah, over the course of about a decade was just doing different roles within HR, uh, from learning and development to industrial relations to, to mostly business partnering work. I suppose I, the, the idea of furthering my studies and doing an MBA kind of was always at the back of my mind, even when I was an undergraduate. Um, but then, you know how things go, right? You, you start a new job and, and things are going well, and there's always kind of like one opportunity after the other. And before you know it, you know, for me, it was 10 years and, and I got caught up in that journey. Um, but I think at some point, probably around the seven, eight year mark, um, you know, career was going well, but I was kind of reaching a point where, where I was asking myself, you know, what's what's next, right? Things have been going well so far. Um, I kind of can see the trajectory in the next five to 10 years, but it's starting to feel like I'm not being fully stretched and, and challenged. Um, and I wanted to open more, more doors for myself. Uh, at that point in time, I was also a HR business partner for some commercial businesses. And I realized that, you know, when I was in the business, business meetings, hearing the, about the business leaders, you know, talking about the, the commercial stuff, the bottom line strategy, that actually got me quite excited as well. And, and so that kind of, I guess, rekindled that, that long term idea of you know, long ago idea of pursuing an MBA. Um, so I remember at that point, I was kind of toying between a few options, right? Um, maybe I just needed a different job change and, and to stretch myself, um, you know, given that I was in HR, do I want to do a, a master's in organizational behavior instead that is quite niche? Um, or do I want to do an MBA that kind of opens more doors for me uh, in terms of career options? Um, and, and yeah, you know, just through a lot of processing, I think I landed on the MBA route, um, just having taken in, you know, the excitement around commercial and strategy that I wanted, um, just at that point, still wanting to keep as many options open for myself as possible, um, and also really wanting a truly international experience. Uh, up to that point, I had only been fully educated and work, worked in Singapore. Um, so, you know, an MBA was also my pathway to really broaden my horizons from a cultural, uh, living internationally, working in that internationally perspective. Yeah, so I think that was something I definitely grappled with as well. You know, um, I, I, I'd approached some MBA consultants at that point in time just to bounce ideas. And some feedback indeed that I got was, hey, you're kind of a bit behind the curve, right? Typically, people do their MBAs when they're like maybe, you know, anywhere between three to seven years experience. You're way past that already. Why an MBA? Why not an EMBA perhaps? Or, you know, we're a bit concerned about your, your recruiting success after the MBA because you're a bit behind the curve. Um, so it was definitely something I grappled with, but I felt that, you know, I, it was, it was kind of like now or never, right? If, if I didn't do it, there was, there was never going to be a right time moving forward. And the frame of mind I took was, hey, I, I can't change my past, right? I can't turn back time. Um, but the sooner I do something to impact my future, um, the better it is for me. So I think I decided to just take the courage and, and go ahead with it anyway. Um, in a sense, almost leave it to the admissions teams, right? To tell me whether I, I could or could not get in. Um, and at least I knew I, I gave it a shot. I think looking back, um, um, on hindsight, certainly no regrets. Uh, I feel like the the additional years of work experience I had also allowed me to bring in a slightly different perspective into the classroom, into the projects that I was working on. Uh, and likewise, in terms of recruiting success, uh, I don't think that's impacted my chances too much. Um, and again, I was able to bring that, that additional kind of experience and maybe kind of wisdom gained from those few more years um, as, as an extra value proposition to potential employers as well. So certainly, I think um, there, I, I feel like whenever you decide to do it or you start pondering the questions, that's probably the right time for you as an individual. And then you just got to take the courage and make that step from that point. So I think what drew me to the European programs was just the sheer diversity of the, the cohorts there. Um, I did uh, apply to one US school and I looked at a couple more as well. Um, but I realized that the composition of the US schools was still fairly American centric relative to what the European programs could offer. Um, when I looked at Cambridge, for example, what, 90, 92-93% of the cohort is, is purely international, right? And that was truly what I wanted to get out of that experience, you know, in a class of less than 
200 people, there were only three Singaporeans and that was great news for me. Um, so I think that automatically drew me to Europe. Um, separately though, I was also quite focused on just one year programs, again, given the slightly longer working tenure I had. So there was greater opportunity cost and I, I didn't want to take too much time out as well. Um, and again, I think the one year programs are a bit more established in the European context. So that naturally drew me there as well. I think for me, um, what was key was helping me kind of narrow down, firstly, the types of schools that I would want to look at. Like I knew I wanted to do a one-year program, had a big sense that Europe was probably a better place. Um, but I think the conversation with the consultant certainly helped me to narrow down that field, right? In terms of like the type of culture and the type of cohort I wanted to be in, given that they've interacted with the school so much. So that definitely helped. Um, I was able to have more open conversations around, hey, this is the career pathway I want to pivot to post MBA, you know, which schools are uh, perhaps, you know, have a stronger focus in that area or has the right alumni networks to get me in that space. So a lot of that was probably a bit more insider knowledge or for someone who was just at the start of that journey, um, it was it was helpful to have someone who had experience to to speak with. Um, of course, then when you decide to go through the applications process, you you may or may not engage a consultant. Um, but even some initial conversations around, okay, how best do I tell my story, right? Given that I may not be a, a typical MBA applicant profile, um, so that was definitely helpful as well. I, I think actually when we came together as a cohort, I, I found that age or kind of years of work experience was no longer um, kind of the differentiator or barrier, right? Regardless of how much experience or how little someone had, the reality was we came from very different fields of work. And I think it was that, that diversity of our backgrounds rather than how many years or how few years we had accumulated um, that, that made the difference really. Um, I think having classmates that were uh, perhaps slightly earlier on in the journey um, also gave me a sense of um, I, I would say, okay, if, if you look at the workforce today, um, you know, we've got what, four or five generations together in that workforce. Even within a generation, I feel like every t every change in like three to five years, people already enter the workforce with very different perspectives and expectations, right? How they work, how they problem solve, you know, where they seek out resources. There's a slight nuance there already. And I think that was then the learning I took from my younger classmates as well. I probably remembered myself being in their their you know, their shoes five years ago um, and just going back into the MBA, working alongside them, perhaps kind of getting that fresh perspective and that fresh energy again, um, rather than being, um, you know, a person with 10 years experience, you're probably more used to dealing with like middle management folks already or upper management folks. I think it was useful to just take a few steps back, regain that that energy um, and just, you know, sometimes be able to, to ideate with a fresh slate, right? Not have the baggage of, oh yeah, I've seen this before, we've done that before, it doesn't work. Um, I think that was that was useful for me at that point. Um, and of course, then having exited the MBA as we're, you know, gunning towards, again, middle management roles. Um, you know, you've recently had experience with classmates who are much earlier on in their journey. And therefore, that I think that also kind of prepares you for like starting to manage early career folks again as well, because uh, you had to learn that informal influence during, you know, the one year that I was there in Cambridge. I mean, Oxbridge or Cambridge definitely is a very strong brand in, in the Asian market, at least um, in Singapore. You know, Cambridge has had a long history with our education system, right? So I think um, the reality is anyone, you know, it does open more doors for you in terms of potential employers um, or even from a professional perspective. You know, if you want to seek someone to, to just bounce ideas with, build your network, you know, get a mentor, just saying that you've been to Cambridge and you, you know, you, you have the Cambridge MBA, that certainly opens up opportunities for you. Yeah. Um, I would say decently strong. I mean, I think uh, compared to, you know, maybe much more as larger uh, kind of European schools, our cohort size is, is smaller, right? So it's it's a smaller network, but I would almost say because it's smaller, it's more tight-knit. Um, so one of the main reasons that actually drew me to Cambridge was also because I personally had known, you know, four to five friends 
who through different years had all ended up in the Cambridge MBA. So in that sense, I would almost say it was that network that kind of drew my attention to this school um, and eventually led me there, right? When you personally know people, you know the competence that they have, you you hear their personal stories of what they've been through um, and you know the character that they stand for. Um, and, and that made the decision much more easier when I had to choose between Cambridge and other schools. I think it definitely was transformational, um, but in many ways, it's almost not something that's very obvious. I, I would say you, you definitely have to take time through, you know, the year or two that you're an MBA, really constantly reflect on like, hey, where I was a month ago or two months ago, where am I now? And as you consciously think about it, I think that's where you realize the changes are. So it could be a lot more subtle than you realize. Um, I also think the true value of an MBA is probably realized not immediately after. I mean, there is some value, um, but the max utilization probably comes in like five, 10 years down the road where you're actually in a senior management position, right? And then you get to see how the breadth or the broadening of perspectives you've gained on the MBA um, applies fully in, in the workplace. Uh, from a personal perspective, I think the cultural broadening was was very key for me. So prior to the MBA, I mean, I assumed, hey, I work in a truly global MNC, right? Every day I'm on calls with colleagues from all over the world. You know, I think I'm fairly internationally minded. I think I've been exposed already. But I think when you're face to face in a physical environment with peers and, and you're not guarded by, you know, organizational hierarchy that, you know, you really have to influence and work alongside people who are peers. Um, I think that truly puts things to the test and that truly grows you in terms of your cultural awareness, um, you know, really building your skills as, a, as a, a global kind of employee and future global business leader. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, the reality is most MBA programs are still minority females. I think we're, we're improving that statistic in Cambridge, but, you know, during my time there, it was still sub 40%, right? So again, you're used to being in an environment that's still slightly more male dominated. And in that process, you continue to find your voice. You continue to lean on your fellow female classmates to give you that, that courage and that inspiration, right? And I think that's all that I've taken away. I think um, a greater sense of awareness of my own cultural identity, building a pride in that, but also knowing how to then um, kind of adapt myself in a global environment. Um, and, and secondly, you know, building again my skills in, in continuing to find my voice as a female um, in a still fairly male dominated environment. Mm -hmm.